I do. Well, in Singapore, uh, where the two men are, also Olivia Enos from America's Heritage Foundation. That's a US conservative think tank that says it is broadly but not always supportive of President Trump's administration. Olivia Enos, thank you very much for talking to us. What do you think Mr Trump's key aims are for this meeting with Mr Kim? I think that President Trump has made clear from the beginning that the primary goal of the U.S. in this negotiation is complete, verifiable, irreversible dismantlement of North Korea's nuclear program. We also got some encouraging signs on Friday at the end of the G7 summit when President Trump said that he would also plan to raise human rights issues in the discussion with Kim Jong-un. So I think that the U.S. has made its goals known and very clear. The big question, and really whether this summit is going to be a success or a failure, the failure of it will really be on Kim Jong-un. Right. And is it realistic to think that he will agree to full denuclearization? I think that we have to, you know, proceed into this summit with a degree of caution. I think that the most likely outcome, or rather the most positive outcome, would be June 12th really being the start of us moving toward this process of denuclearization. But I think that that would be a highly optimistic and a highly positive outcome. So I think we should be looking to see signs as to whether or not Kim Jong-un is willing to not just agree to what the US definition of denuclearization is, but say that it's committing and demonstrate practical steps that it's going to take to move the needle on denuclearization. And what could Mr. Trump offer Mr. Kim in return? I think this is, you know, one of the most pressing and interesting questions of this summit. And I think a lot of times people forget exactly who we're dealing with. Kim Jong-un is not a nice guy. And the fact that he even has a nuclear and missile program is in violation of the Kim regime's international agreements. It's actually a signatory to the non-proliferation treaty. And so I think that the U.S. doesn't have to put a whole lot on the table in order to convince North Korea that it needs to abide by the laws that it said it would agree to in the first place. I think that only after the U.S. can verify that North Korea is moving toward denuclearization can we even consider the lifting of sanctions or the reduction in pressure. So my hope is that regardless of the success of the summit, the Trump administration would continue to maintain its focus on maintaining leverage, which includes involving a maximum pressure strategy over the near term. Right. What do you think President Trump's uh, approach should be? We know, we know about his personality, we know about his character. Will it be the same when he meets Mr. Kim? I think that, you know, President Trump's approach should be very straightforward. I think he should continue to reiterate his calls for complete, verifiable, irreversible dismantlement of North Korea's uh, nuclear and missile program. But I think that President Trump should also be clear and call for the closure of prison camps in North Korea and press Kim, the Kim regime on these human rights issues. I think that if June 12th is going to be the beginning of an authentic relationship between the U.S. In North Korea, now is the time to be frank and open and honest, not just about the challenges that we have with North Korea's rogue nuclear program, but also about the threats that we see emanating from the human rights abuses that the Kim regime exacts against its own people. Do we know approximately how many people are in those labor camps? We do. At this point, uh, there are between 80,000 and 120,000 individuals in death-inducing conditions in these prison camps. Beyond that, conservative estimates suggest that more than 400,000 people have already died in these prison camps. I think it's the least that President Trump can do to speak for the North Korean people who cannot speak for themselves and to call on Kim Jong-un, frankly, to maybe eventually move towards closure of those prison camps. Okay. Well, we saw the tweet from President Trump earlier that he's, uh, uh, you know, he's excited. There is excitement in the air. I mean, is that the general mood 24 hours ahead of this summit, would you say, there in Singapore? 
It's a very exciting time to be in Singapore. It's a very exciting time to be covering policy toward North Korea. I think everyone is waiting with eager expectation, but also trying to temper those expectations. Because if past negotiations are any indication, North Korea has proven time and time again to be an unfaithful negotiating partner. And so I think we need to be cautious. We need to hope for the best. But I think we need to make sure that we have realistic expectations going into this summit. OK, we will see what happens. Thank you very much. We don't have long to wait. Thank you very much, Olivia. Olivia Enos, Thank you for who me. is from the Heritage Organization.